Welcome, Zodiac. It's the Soul Family Weekend Read. This is going to be for the 12th through the 14th using the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck. And yeah, it's cold as fuck here in Cancun, Mexico. I mean, this is ridiculous. I am half, I have to wear a hoodie. I could close the windows, but I don't want to close the windows. It's just it's so wonderful, really, the sound of the room. It's, uh, bird, you know, parrots just flew by. <laughs> and it's not that cold. I'm just kind of a uh, cancer moon. That's my excuse. <laughs> you know, I want to do a Celtic cross for the weekend, collective cross here for you guys. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'm just thinking a lot about Mars and Mercury. That's my little obsession. You know, I like it because it's a niche, you know. Not everybody else got everything else covered. But what are these guys up to? And, you know, Mercury's separating now, like a degree. And I think it's nine and eight, you know, for Mars and Scorpio. And from here, I mean, you're going to pull apart. Mercury's going to pull ahead. Um, um, and by the time we hit the full moon, they'll be like, I don't know, nine degrees apart, separate. Mercury will be long gone, you know, and you know how it's going to be well on its way. But... I think something happened between last month and this ma month when they when they conjuncted solid there uh, in uh, Libra, when the Sun and Mars also conjuncted, they were all right there for the party. Um, and I got that they were communicating, so uh, we're making plans. You know, this is the energy. It's like really the energy that would translate into human life. That's kind of making plans. Um, and I see it in, you know, making alignments. It's like, you know, I think we stumbled through the portal and maybe, you know, it, like, it, part of things is just putting everything back together. Like, life becomes a little bit different, you know, once you're on the other side of the 8 portal. It's one thing to say, well, my values are different, but it's another thing to put that actually into some kind of practice, guys. So, um... I did pre-shuffle as usual for this, and I wanted to just do a Celtic crossing, but keeping in mind kind of really what the reading is, it's like, you know, what's the goal, what's uh, the Mars uh, is in action, and, and Mercury are together, and they're, they're plotting action, so what is the action that we're, uh, is on our minds, I guess, you know? Uh, kind of get a feel. There's something going on there. That's very personal. This is what I'm trying to get at. This is not the outer planet. The moon is personal. I don't think it's as personal like Mercury and Mars or Venus. This is our most personal energy. The moon, yeah, I get it. I see. But there's a, you know, the collective unconscious comes with the moon. You know, um, your will, your ego, I mean, that's yours, right? I mean, your desires, you got to own that. It's a whole thing about dealing with any kind of addiction. And, um, you know, Mercury is your mind. How do we think? What do we think about? What's the quality of our mind? So, let me start. I'm going to go with the King of Pentacles. We're going to do an upright reading as usual. If I, can, I don't think I'll be able to get this all in. Let's see. Crossing. Oh, we don't like that. King of Pentacles. Crossed by the Seven of Swords, you should always show each one. Past position, Six of Wands. Future position, Six of Cups. That's quite a little transition there. This is all of our personal energy here, which I believe I'm reading. It's all about our personal energy. It's kind of, I'm not saying it's not about it, because it's all about connecting with that and operating with that. I really want to look at what's going on with our mind and our actions. What alignment are we making? Eight of Cups. Now, um, this is in like our most conscious position in, uh, you know, um, a Celtic cross. Almost like this is the question or this is what's on our minds. Um, and let's see, what, uh, importantly, is the Four of Pentacles. Is in the most unconscious position, and then we're going to have the advice uh, outside interference, the hanged man outside, and 
influences, you could pot say. Hopes, dreams, and wishes, six of pinnacles. Huh. And the outcomes, the two of swords. Guy, that's a that's a touchy outcome there, guys, with the two of swords. Wow. Um so give me a minute to get all this in. We're not gonna worry here about the uh, bottom of the deck. I can always clarify if necessary. I mean, it's just a weekend read, but I consider it a big read. Um, I, cause I really think there's something going on here. I think we're trying to get to something. You know, we come in with the King of Pentacles. That's pretty damn solid, right? Um, and, you know, I think, like, we, we feel, feel is the word, cups, we really feel like we've put something behind us, you know? Um, and we may feel like we've actually had a victory in the recent past. But, and also, that's an energy of just feeling more uh, alive, uh, physically better, works for me, uh, feeling uh, stronger, physically better than you may have in the past um, last month or something, months time frame. And, but crossing uh, the uh, Seven of Swords uh, for us, um, I think this is getting bad information. And you have to wonder here, uh, you know, because I'm talking about, I'm asking the question of Mercury and Mars, okay? So here's what you've got figure as astrology, okay? Mercury's responsible for the information, the direct flow of the left brain information that really goes to the sun. And the main thing is that we, we think we have let go of something emotional from the past. Uh, this could be cutting ties. We've cut ties with psychic. We've you know, really uh, made the effort to let go of this. Uh, but it's like this is in our future position. It's like this persists no matter what. It's also this it's a feeling of, that there's soulmates. And, you know, I think that way. I mean, there's a lot of soulmates, though. I, think, I don't think they're all that limited. Uh, but, you know, this is about lying to ourselves. It's, uh, I think, a very personal read. And this is the personal area of the Celtic Cross. So, uh, in some manner, we're lying to ourselves. And I think with the Six of Wands energy, uh, it could be, you know, there's the laurels here, kind of riding on our laurels. Maybe. I don't know that I had any laurels to ride on. <laughs> I thought I rode everything to the ground, you know, and burned it. Um, because I think this is about ourselves. And, um, it's not only the energy of lying, cheating, and stealing, but of, uh, you know, making a, a discernment, kind of a scorpionic, I believe, like discernment. Um, of things uh, like a Scorpio Mercury is usually where Mercury is now. We're talking about um, very uh, strong, I found, but very basically intelligent and really cut to the core of things. Then understand that one thing's behind another thing and one thing's part of another. But then we have down here in this unconscious position the Four of Pentacles. I see all of this is kind of not taking action. If you just take away, this is the uh, advice and all of the energy we're bringing in from the outside. It's not personal. If you take that away, there's kind of a n not taking action, feeling like things are coming along, we're getting stronger, um, feeling pretty solid with the King of Pentacles, having a lot of hope. Uh, for the future. Honestly, this could be a hope for a soulmate union. I mean, I, I guess I share that. Um, 
maybe because uh, something like that for the future. Um, and you feeling like I talk a lot about doing the walk away and uh, also letting go of old relationships to manifest the, uh, the right one. You know, in the singles readings, if you watch, by the way, always on Friday, Sag and Capricorn Day, Dave Sky Tarot, in addition to this uh, Soul Family read. Um, so I talk about in this in the singles reading, but it's the same thing I think to manifest anything. It's like you sort of have to let go of something in order to get something. And you see this kind of like holding on, not letting go. And it's also like holding on to your money. You're kind of not feeling that you have enough. You know, being kind of insecure. So this is kind of in this unconscious position. We may not even be really relating to that. I mean, not to justify my reading, but you might even go, wait a minute, I am not insecure, I'm not well. But are you taking the action that I think needs to be taken? Um, that's what Mars is talking about. And you got advice. We got advice. Uh, Eight of Pentacles, one of the best cards in the deck, in my opinion. Again, highly personal energy. So the advice is for us to apply ourselves personally and to work. Simple as that. However you consider work, uh, that's the doing the good work, you know. Is it the good work of relationship, the good shadow work of self, or the work of spiritual work in, in whatever way that is? For us, um, but that's the advice um, from spirit. And the outside influences, hanged man. I think this is going with your four pentacles energy too. Um, you know, uh, you're you're not in the kind of energy in terms of the outside environment that's out of your control that is conducive to going for it, going for it. And, and I don't want to be clear, this is not necessarily the energy, energy of going for it, I think with Mercury and Mars. Going for something, though, that's the thing. It's probably something pretty specific. You know, um, I don't think you can underestimate the sophistication of the Scorpionic influence on the Mercury and Mars and Sun right now. We're in this. And it's going to get right to the bottom and exactly this is the kind of energy that would get to the bottom of anything delusional, illusional, um, because it goes there, you know, into whatever dark places there are, things can't hide. Like I, for me, I have Pluto opposite the moon, and one of the things I've realized, like, to forget hiding anything, even from yourself, that, that, uh, it, oh, that's over. <laughs> Pluto's opposite your moon. It goes on like forever. So six of pentacles now. Mm. Hopes and fears position here, guys. Hopes and fears. I mean, this is classic fear of like success, really. Six of pentacles is success. And I keep talking about this hard won personal energy. I know I'm parsing it out, it all goes together, believe me, I get it, you know, the gestalt of it all, but um, this is personally rolling up the sleeves, bringing our life together, doing what needs to be done. We come in as King of Pentacles, I remind you, here. There's some kind of little detour here, I'll call it, is it a detour or something, and that's what the outcome is about. And the outcome most definitely goes with this Seven of Swords, and they most definitely relate to the unconscious core of the issue here. So your instincts are just no, no, don't do it. It's it like, there's got to be some level of this here where you sort of don't believe your story, your own story, or you're kind of not believing yourself, or not trusting your intuition in a major way, like just sort of being very skeptical. That, that Seven of Swords, you could also say, is a very skeptical energy too. And this could be skeptical. And this is energy where we're left thinking, I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. And yet, I think yesterday's uh, reading was about the heart opening and that's what this is, it's, there's a heart opening. So 
what's come I think this is what this is about see this is not about going and bothering anybody else it's all this beautiful things going in inside of us and it's showing how our heart is going to open again uh, by the 19th I think uh, Mercury and Mars be separated by like nine degrees moving further apart um, Mercury taking the lead of course um, in um, things I think will start coming to us and we're kind of in the dark right now and we sort of don't trust ourselves I think that maybe is what this gets down to don't trust ourselves the hangman that's not doing us any good um, in here we've, we've won this hard won uh, uh, victory is stability uh, personal taking some kind of personal control over our life balance um, and yet there's something that doesn't feel right and it this is the feeling of like something's gonna get me and the response right now is I'm holding tight so um, because you know, wow, that's heavy. You know, it's like that's what you're trying to keep out of your mind. Now, I got to tell you, I, I, this classically here, this is not a love and relationship reading. The souls, family, we like to read for uh, spirituality manifestation. Um, um, this can be like classic of an affair, you're going to find out. But if this is internal and spiritual, and we're talking about Mercury, we're talking about Mars and the self and taking action. Um, I think it's like, uh, from a soul's point of view, it's like your soul is sort of waiting for this tower to come down. And the tower's not always a bad thing. I think what the tower might be, and what the, I mean, like this might be the answer here, is that you've either been very almost deliberately like lying to yourself and that usually serves an emotional purpose we do that because we don't want to deal with something emotionally and maybe you thought you walked away from this but emotionally you never dealt with it right because you know um, you're just sitting in it with the two of swords and sort of lying to yourself about everything so that you don't have to have any cups involved there you know and what the tower brings down because probably this is in the future position all of this is a soulmate connection that's all the connections are soulmate connections so that's what's going on um and you know this could definitely be around this you're in this energy i know it's at 12 it's opposite my venus like hard right now um and we're clarifying it with the tower and with me it's a little sense like you you gotta know like it's coming God know, and I don't really see this kind of like one of the best towers ever. Maybe it's just where you're gonna go. Okay, I get it now. I, I was totally lying to myself about that thing, and now I know. I know, and you can move on. And I think it, there's a need to take action, but it's the right thing to do. What you're doing, you're kind of conserving your money, conserving your resources, conserving your strength, healing. Maybe take care of yourself. We got four pentacles. Um, you know. And I think that's the perfect thing to do. So thank you guys. If you can think of anywhere to share this, appreciate it. Uh, any kind of platform uh, would be uh, a good uh, help. And uh, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Thank you.